first special type of linear maps that we're going to study is orthogonal tensors. The first function of orthogonal tensors is rotation of objects. So for example, you can see in front of you a triangle in a two-dimensional vector space. By applying an orthogonal tensor or a rotation orthogonal tensors, I can rotate every vector in that triangle by an angle of 86, and the matrix of rotation is this Q. If I multiply Q by every vector in the original triangle, I get this rotated triangle. The second function of orthogonal tensors is reflection. For example, you have here this triangle in a two-dimensional vector space. If I multiply every vector here in that triangle by this orthogonal tensor, I will get this new reflected image of the original triangle. The third function of orthogonal tensors is the change of basis, and we studied the change of basis before. If I have an orthonormal basis set, for example, here made out of E1 and E2. And if I have a new orthonormal basis set E prime 1 and E prime 2, I can find the new coordinates of U prime, the new coordinates of V prime, the new coordinates of M prime using an orthogonal tensor whose components are obtained by finding the components E prime 1 dot E1, E prime 1 dot E2, E prime 2 dot E1, and E prime 2 dot E2. So these are the three functions of orthogonal tensors. So we're going to start by the definition of orthogonal tensors. What are orthogonal tensors? Orthogonal tensors can be defined as those linear maps from Rn to Rn. They are very special in that Q transpose Q is equal to I. The transpose of Q is actually its inverse. So Q transpose is actually equal to the inverse of Q. The first property of orthogonal tensors based on the definition is that when I multiply a vector by an orthogonal tensor, the resulting norm is the same as the norm of the original vector. So for example, if I have Q, an orthogonal matrix from Rn to Rn, and if I have U, an element of Rn, a vector, then I have the norm of QU squared is equal to qu dot qu this is equal to u dot q transpose qu q transpose q is equal to i so this is equal to u dot u so this is equal to norm u squared which means the length of the vector does not change when i'm multiplied by an orthogonal tensor similarly if i have v in rn qu dot qv so after I multiply these vectors by an orthogonal matrix Q, so Q U and Q V, that dot product between Q U and Q V is equal to U dot Q transpose Q V, and these two Q transpose Q is equal to I, so this is equal to U dot V, and so you can see that Q does not really change the dot product between vectors. Since by definition Q transpose Q is equal to i. If I multiply both sides by q minus 1, and then of course I can see that q q minus 1 is equal to i, so I have q transpose is equal to q minus 1. So basically the inverse is the transpose of q. And so therefore I have the orthogonal tensors are invertible, and for every orthogonal tensor the determinant of q is equal to positive or negative 1. That's because I have the determinant of Q transpose Q is equal to the determinant of I. Now the determinant of I we know is, is equal to 1. The determinant of Q transpose, the determinant of Q multiplied by each other is equal to 1. And we know that these two are equal, so this is equal to the determinant of Q squared is equal to 1 which means the determinant of Q is equal to positive or negative 1. Now since Q transpose Q is equal to I, and Q, Q transpose is equal to I, 
Because of these, we reach that the rows of the matrix representation of Q are orthonormal. The reason is, let's look at QQ transpose equal to I. What is QQ transpose? If this is Q, these are the rows. Let's call this row 1, row 2, row 3, row 4. Q transpose, so this is Q. This is Q transpose. This is going to be row 1. This is row 2. Now it becomes a column. Row 3 and row 4. So let's assume that it's a 4 by 4. Now this is equal to I, which is 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0. 0, 0, 0, 1. So this is equal to i. So q, q transpose is equal to i. So what does this mean? It means that the first row, when I multiply it by the first row, I get 1, which means the dot product of the first row with itself is equal to 1. So the norm of the vector whose components are the first row has norm 1. When I multiply the first row by the second row, I get 0. When I multiply the first row by the third row, I get 0. When I multiply the first row by the fourth row, I get 0. And so on. So this tells me that the rows are orthonormal. They're all perpendicular to each other, and the norm of each is equal to 1, because the norm of the, the vector in the first row is equal to the vector dot itself, and it's equal to 1. For the second vector, 2 dot 2 will also be equal to 1, and so on. And the same, similar to the previous slide, I know that Q transpose Q equal I, and Q transpose equal I. This tells me that the columns of the matrix representation of Q are also orthonormal. The product of two orthogonal tensors is again orthogonal. This can be seen very easily if I have Q1 and Q2 both orthogonal then I know that Q1 Q2 multiplied by Q1 Q2 transpose I would like to know whether this is going to be equal to I or not so let's see this is equal to Q1 Q2 multiplied by Q2 transpose, Q1 transpose. This is equal to these two guys give me I, and so I'm left with Q1, Q1 transpose, which is equal to I, and therefore the product is also an orthogonal tensor because the product Q1, Q2, and it's transpose, when I multiply them by each other, I get I. Now, we saw that the determinant of the orthogonal matrix is either 1 or negative 1. If it's 1, we call Q a rotation. If it's negative 1, we think Q is associated with some reflection. One of the very important examples of orthogonal matrices is the matrix I. The identity matrix is an orthogonal matrix because I multiplied by I transpose is equal to I. And so it satisfies the property of an orthogonal transfer. I know that I transpose multiplied by I is equal to I. Therefore, I in itself is an orthogonal matrix. Now, how can I check whether a matrix is orthogonal or not? You have to check that the rows are orthonormal. So I have to check the length of each row as a vector is equal to 1, and when I multiply each vector by the other one, I get 0. When I take the dot product between each vector and the other row vectors, I get 0. In that case, then this is an orthogonal matrix. As an example of orthogonal tensors, this is a rotation matrix. Q is equal to cosine theta sine theta, negative sine theta cosine theta, where theta is the angle of a clockwise rotation. This matrix rotates objects by an angle theta in a two-dimensional vector space. And you have this tool uh, on the website that illustrates this procedure. The same matrix can also be used 
for a counterclockwise change of basis and notice the difference now it can be used as a counterclockwise change of basis which is the opposite direction so for example if i have a1 and a2 and if i have a new orthonormal basis set that's rotated to counterclockwise angle theta then e prime 1 e prime 2 this is the new coordinate system the rotation matrix that describes this coordinate transformation is actually cosine theta sine theta negative sine theta cosine theta and so be very careful that this rotation matrix is associated with a counterclockwise exchange of basis and is associated with a clockwise rotation of vectors.